evening and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. And when you listen, stream, or download straight to your device, CastBox is your best option. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started. Enjoy the show. All right, guys. Good morning. Good night. Thank you for choosing the Body Snatchers podcast. If you are new, please head over to bodysnatchersmedia.com and subscribe. Uh, we're also over on YouTube. That's youtube.com backslash Body Snatchers podcast or media rather, Body Snatchers Media. Think of the old stuff. Um, we're also on Twitter and Instagram. So uh, yeah, join us. Come by Facebook, whatever. We're all over the place. I am hanging out with Gia today. Gia, what's up? Uh, not much. I am living the life, existing 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 man you know i want to make a joke but god damn it that's true that's that's just how it is these days just getting by the bare minimums so today is kind of a different subject than uh you know we normally do but i think it'll be fun so you know if you guys usually listen to us breaking things down uh we're not gonna do that today ha twist right you ah plot twist god um yeah you know <laughs> So we had a lot of events this summer. There's, um, I went to two cons in the last uh, couple of weeks. And Gia, you've been to, oh, Jesus, probably like five or six in the last couple of weeks, maybe two months. No, just, just two. <laughs> I never know with Gia. It's hard to tell. I, I think I had a couple like a few months ago. Um, okay, yeah. Like April, I think, was the last one before this month. But this month were like all the really big ones here in California. Okay, so that's definitely what I'm thinking of. Uh, but we thought it would be fun to do a show just to kind of address a few things. Uh, I get a lot of messages from people pretty often that are basically like, hey, man, um, I didn't want to publicly tell anybody, but I'm really interested in going to a con, but I don't know anything about them. I've never gone. You know, why should I go? It, you know, a lot of people are going to think it's lame and just – you know, kind of weird stuff. And it's like, I don't want people to feel that way, but I've kind of grown tired of answering all these people individually just because I'm very vocal about posting my pictures, um, you know, and when I dress up and all that stuff and Gia's a freaking cosplayer. So obviously, you know, she gets, I'm sure people, you know, come to you, Gia, and ask you, you know, the same sort of questions I would assume at times. Yeah, definitely. People, people are always asking me questions about like how to get ready for conventions, uh, what to look for in costumes for conventions, uh, what 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 different things there are to do like panels contests like what to do just randomly out on the the con floor photo shoot things yeah you know and it's like i you know i, I feel like as a nerd going to at least one con is is definitely worth it and not you know all cons are made equal but i think if you know if you go to one con and get your feet wet you'll get some kind of experience out of it something that will kind of you know help you determine as to whether or not you want to keep going to these things cuz cons you know i don't like going to all 3 days ever to a con but i always love the first day because it's just a breath of fresh air like you know if you're a closet nerd you have no idea how amazing it feels to just you know walk into a giant auditorium you know with people that you know, think just like you, you know, they're in the, all the same stuff that you are, you know, that you don't have to have a conversation about, you know, the, your favorite sports scene that you really don't care about, or, you know, whatever the thing is, like you get to just be you 110%. And it's just the best experience ever. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, that, and that's just surface level. Like, God, you know, and we're going to touch base on a few things today, but I mean, with like the cosplay and like the anime music or, you know, the, the, the comic book stuff that comes up, the, the, the indie artists, um, you know, that are just trying to, you know, make way, make a couple bucks and, and share fantastic artwork. Uh, the, the panels, I mean, there's just so much stuff to do with these cons. And if you've never gone, I mean, you're, you're, you're missing out. So, uh, yeah, Gia, before we like get started, started is, you know, cause I kind of maybe talk about like my first experience versus like kind of where I'm at now. Um, would you like to jump in and, and share some stuff? Oh, yeah, definitely. So the first convention I ever went to was actually ASEN. Um, that was my senior year. Uh, I didn't dress up in cosplay. I dressed up in something. Uh, I just had like this old witch costume that I had from like Halloween the week the year prior. 
so I just kind of wore that and I went with a group of my friends and we only went for one of the days but it was kind of my first like tiptoe into a convention we didn't have much money so we just walked around looking at all the art and this was back before you had like all the huge like contests going on before like j there were just uh, hundreds of different panels uh, so for me, that was the first experience I had with it. It wasn't until a couple years later, I started going to conventions in Korea and their comic conventions, um, were just slightly different because they would have them monthly and it would be, you know, in a subway station one, one month, it'd be on a street corner with like a small building warehouse that you could go into another month. And it was all in different locations all around Seoul. Uh, so that was, it was pretty interesting for me. I was able to actually start cosplaying out there and then bring my cosplay to the States and realize I was trash in comparison to everybody else <laughs> who had been like honing the skill for a while. So I didn't like legit get into the whole cosplay aspect of it, like hardcore until probably 2012. And then that's when I started focusing on learning how to sew properly. And a lot of things I was hand sewing because I was afraid to use a sewing machine and, just learning how to make props. It is. I think, uh, you know, I wish like you, I could have gone at a, at a younger age. I was probably like, I would say like mid twenties when I f went to my very first con and it was c Oh yeah. Some, some people get them to embrace their inner nerd when they're a teenager and they're like popular is really hard. I didn't give any, f none to be given. <laughs> watch your, watch your mouth. I know. Bleep me out. Oh God. Um, <laughs> So it was, it's not to say that like I didn't embrace my inner nerd, but like to be honest, I just didn't know anybody who went to these, uh, you know, cons and nobody had really expressed to me how great, you know, they are. Uh, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is. You know, I figured everything was like all the memes I had ever seen. And memes weren't, were barely even really a thing if I'm being honest, but you know, just, uh, the information and forums and stuff that I had seen, you know, where people take pictures and it just, it just looked like something that was corny. Like I wouldn't be interested in it. Like, no, I don't want to do this. No. The olden days of deviant art and the old school, like fanfic yeah. forums. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I finally went and my, my very first con was actually C2E2. Um, Geez, I don't, I don't know, maybe like six or seven years ago. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, the con didn't cost as much as I thought it would for one day. I mean, depending on what time of year you buy, I mean, these things can be as low as like 35 bucks uh, and they can be as high as I've seen uh, 250, 300, depending on where oh, you're Oh, higher going. than that, depending on where you go and well, yeah. how many days you're going for. And if you get a VIP pass versus just a regular general admission pass. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I'm thinking more towards like the general admission, but she's right. They do have, you know, things that become, can become even more expensive. But um, I don't want that to deter you. Like in most cases, you know, between 30 and 100 bucks, you can get into a con most cases. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, like, like, OK, so like there's different sections of cons. You know, you, you get your badge, you go in and you, at least like C2E2, for instance, like there's comic books everywhere. People are selling all sorts of comics, um, you know, which is kind of a giveaway. But then there's other stuff there. Like there's so many, um, you know, people who are like, uh, you know, artists that are selling T-shirts with uh, unique uh, clothing and it's stuff that is it honestly extends beyond just comics you know oh yeah definitely so you when you walk into a convention usually it's split up into a few different sections as you were stating so you have artist alley which is generally where you see all of like the cosplayers selling prints the indie artists selling their artwork sometimes you'll have like the comic book artists out there you have um you have the actual booths for comic companies so like you might have a marvel booth that one dc booth lions forge uh some other ones that are less known you have like image and then you have like an entertainment hall and your entertainment hall has like all of your games that you can test play it's got you know even if it's not new games coming out they have things like little retro arcade areas where you could play ddr or some like galaga and things of that nature like at, so i went to san diego comic-con this last weekend um, was that the weekend of the 20th? It was like the 18th through the 21st. And they lit like Capcom literally had a whole display for Monster Hunter Iceborne. Uh, and they had a legit Palico, like just display up where you can go take pictures behind it. Yeah, I saw that. You're jealous, huh? Yeah. Being the Monster Hunter fan that I am now, I was, I was pretty jealous, but it's, <laughs> I mean, it's badass. 
and who knows, maybe next year I'll be able to go. Honestly, between uh, the pictures that I saw this year, I'm probably more interested in San Diego Comic Con than I uh, than Anime Expo if I have to choose. And I do. Oh, definitely. I would say honestly, with this last year, I probably won't go to Anime Expo next year. And if I do go, it'll only be for a day instead of the whole weekend because it was just so busy tickets were oversold so there was just so many people i would even say too many people i am glad i didn't bring bran because one of the days i stood in line literally for three and a half hours and had i brought bran we would have been in that line for 30 minutes and he would have been ready to go so yeah and it's understandable and this is like nationwide people were you know upset and crying about it so yeah i think i think uh anime expo at this point has maybe just gotten a little bit too big for itself you know Mm -hmm. rather than cutting people off when they've sold out they're continuing to sell and overbooking things and it's just becoming a nightmare for everybody trying to cram in yeah there were even vendors that couldn't get in on time to sell things or were getting in like literally with two hours left of the convention and that's vendors people who like have a side door to get into yeah and that's just beyond me uh (laughs) you know but but you know getting back into you know everything else you know when when you walk into these places uh i think one thing to keep in mind is um the age group if you're you know fairly young or you know much older um and uh, you know that that's kind of open to interpretation but what i'm saying is is there's all kinds of age ranges that are here so if you've never gone and you you know feel some type of way about going or you think you know you don't have a lot of friends if you i mean you can go by yourself but if you can find just one person who's down to check it out with you that maybe just likes batman or you know whatever something minor have them go with you. That's really all you need is just kind of like a buddy. So you got people to, you know, compare and look stuff at, take pictures and have fun. But people are there with their kids. I mean, I'd seen people there, you know, with like grandparents, some of the best cosplays I've seen, whether it be in Chicago or California have been by like, I guess what you could call senior citizens. You oh know, yeah, definitely like the older ladies. Yeah. Like getting in there, you know, just killing it. Um, I seen one lady that was, uh, she had built the, it was like a giant version of the, the old man from up. And like had the movable mouth and everything. And I didn't even know what it was. Oh, all yeah. She, she goes to every convention. She goes to every convention. She was at Anime Expo and she was at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. No, she's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, was able to take pictures with her and meet her. And it was truly a pleasure because I didn't even understand that she's like kind of a big deal. And, um, but the work she does definitely speaks for itself. Uh, but again, you know, I'm just bringing that up for people who feel, you know, might feel like kind of self conscious or something like that. Um, and also, I'd like to add the pressure of dressing up. If it's your first con, like, it's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just get your feet wet, like go in there and, and, you know, see how you like it, check it out. And if you're having fun, then maybe next year do like a really mild cosplay. There's so many websites where, you know, you can buy elaborate things or you can buy something that's, you know, maybe 30 or 40 bucks. Or you can be like me and kill yourself con crunching. Actually, I don't kill myself con crunching. I start my costumes months out, so I don't have to con crunch, but you can even do something like more intricate if that's what you want to do. If you're comfortable with crafting, or even if you're not, if you just want to like figure it out as you go, just pick something and don't plan it out like three weeks before because then you're going to be like all the cosplayers I see on Instagram or Facebook crying about how they don't have time to do things. And then they're up all night the night before a con and then they can't enjoy the con because they're tired as hell walking around in this costume that's not most of the time not even finished. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, saying there's like all kinds of websites, like any time that I point anybody in the direction of a website, it's usually me costumes or cosplay beaner, I think is what it's called. It's like B-H-I-N-E-R. And half the time people ask me for a specific costume. So I'll like go start Googling and finding stuff for them and sending them links. So there, there's all sorts of websites that you can go to to find things. I would also like to recommend um, EZ Cosplay is a really, really good one. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, I guess to some degree they can be overpriced, but I mean, for about a hundred bucks, I mean, you can get like all your basic costumes that have decent quality to them. Um, and there's, there's just so much stuff that, you know, whether it be, you know, anime or, you know, something like Spider-Man uh, suits. I mean, they have so much stuff and the quality is great. I've ordered from them maybe four or five times and I, I've never been disappointed. With well, the to be fair, so I haven't bought costumes from them, but I did get my Asta sword from them and that came out really good. It's like a resin cast. Uh, it's hollow on the inside, but it's dual sided. It's, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, just given some options for people who want to dress up. But again, you know, more importantly, if you don't want to, you know, fully dress up, you know, don't. There's little things that you can do, um, you know, for like a very subtle cosplay. Hell, if you really want to be corny and grab a freaking Superman shirt with a big S on it and play it that safe and say you're Superboy or something, just do it. You know, you'll feel the part. 
Um, yeah, and people do casual cosplays. People. Yeah, people do casual uh, casual cosplays all the time where they're just like wearing cat ears or they wear like a mask or they'll just wear a wig. They'll wear like swimsuit versions of things to make it super easy. So. Oh, yeah. And you know what's weird is like uh, I, I, maybe you didn't feel this way because it sounds like you just kind of jumped in from your first time, which is awesome. Um, Feet first in my Yuna costume that looked like <laughs> trash when I look back at it. <laughs> well, I mean, my first time um, going to cosplay, I definitely, you know, felt very out of place. You know, being at home, I think we had to stop and get gas. I was like, kind of hold my head down in shame, like, oh, nobody look at me. You know, like I just, I just, <laughs> like, I just wasn't like ready for it. You know, <laughs> no, and dude, then, just like, I, just own it. Like the first time that I wore my stuff out, so. Okay, let me take that back. One of the very first times that I wore stuff out where I had to travel was when I went to Seoul Comic Con in 2017. Every other time, like I had enough gas in my car, like I went to Wizards World in 2015 up in Chicago, and I didn't have to stop anywhere, so I didn't really care. But anytime I go anywhere now, and I'm like traveling, and people are just staring at me, I'm just like, what's up? And I just own it. Which is where I'm at with it now. But like I'm saying, the, the very first time I did it, I did not have that confidence. I felt yeah, you were place. embarrassed, huh? People staring at you? <laughs> yeah, but there's a, I mean, yeah, and they still do, but now I don't, I don't care. But the, what I'm saying is, is the moment where I was able to overcome that. And I feel that most people will, if you're like kind of shy or nervous about it, you know, cause I kind of felt like, oh man, I'm like, am I too old for this? Or, you know, I, you feel out of place when you get to a major convention, you all of a sudden you go from feeling out of place as you're leaving the parking garage, walking to the con to feeling way the hell underdressed. And all of a sudden it just clicks. You oh, know? especially, especially when you're like driving up and you're parking like a, a, a block from the convention center and somebody's walking from like four blocks away and they got these big old wings on with like goth makeup and leather stuff on and they look like a Hot Topic special and you're just like, okay, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's just so funny how it switches. And I think once you kind of get through that experience right there, um, everything else is just smooth sailing because you know, that day you're going to take pictures with people. Um, I think my, the very first time I did it, uh, actually, no, I don't think anybody noticed mine because it was so subtle, but the second time that I did like a cosplay, um, I had people like, you know, I'm all excited taking pictures with, you know, people who I figured were like, you know, real cosplayers. And I had people pull me aside and go, Hey, can I take a picture with you? And that's the coolest feeling ever. And once that happens, I think that you know, like a little fire ignites. And then every year you want to try a little harder or have a little bit more fun with it. Or, you know, let, you know, maybe, maybe not go as far as Gia, but at least be willing to try, you know, some few things. Cause now I'm willing to mix it up and mix up parts and grab a hot glue gun. And, you know, I'm just, I'm getting more excited as I go at my own pace. Oh, and I always recommend it because for me, the best things for me is when kids come up to me and they ask for pictures uh, because they recognize the character that I'm cosplaying. And then another thing that like blows my mind is like, you don't have to know the character that you're cosplaying. It helps if you do only because sometimes people will walk up to you and they will expect you to be in character and they will start asking you questions that that character would respond to. Like the first time I wore Inuyasha out to a convention was LA Comic-Con two years ago. And I literally had people walk up to me and talk to me as if I was Shishomaru and ask me why I hated Inuyasha so much and all this other stuff. And I was just like, man, good thing I actually binge watched that show like crazy when I was in high school. I dressed up as Luffy and somebody walked up to me and grabbed me on the shoulder serious as hell and got really close to my ear. And they said, I'm sorry about your brother. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to laugh, but I was like hurt. And like, I just totally fell out of character for a minute. I was like, Ace, no, which in, <laughs> in turn brought me back in the character and they gave me a hug and I walked around my way. That was literally all we said to one another. But looking back, see, that's just so awesome that you can do stuff like that. Yeah, and like, and then, When I was with you, somebody was like, oh, you're not kidnapped by the Soul Society right now. And I was just like, well, obviously not. <laughs> Right? I'm like, here, huh? Oh. They let me out every once in a while. Like, mama, yeah. mama gave me. Where's Ichigo? I have no idea where he's at. He always goes off and does his own thing. Go find him yourself. I'm a nice keeper. They're just stupid stuff like that. It's great. It is great. It is. And and not only that, but like, you know, it's it's not even just like comic books and artists making t shirts. Well, they make really dope t shirts, by the they way. Do. I got one I got one with uh Super Saiyan uh Rose Goku like flicking people off. Like it's it looks amazing. I I, I got one that had and they were like iron on appliques, basically. And it was with Garnet and it was such an awesome shirt. But like after the first wash it started peeling off. So now it just sits like in my drawer as a decoration because I don't want to ruin it. 
that's another thing. Uh, be careful of that. I, I've only gotten like one bad product, like a quality shirt, I should say. But I've bought plenty that are amazing. So, you know, don't be afraid to try that stuff. But here's one of my favorite parts about the cons is the vintage merchandise for old school fans that turns up. So you guys are going to find like they'll have like all the best Japanese PlayStation games, like American versions and also, uh, you know, the Japanese versions, you know, for sale. Like I saw uh, most recently, uh, I think it was Tree of Mana that I came across, like the Japanese version. I almost wanted to buy it, even though I it was you posted a picture of it. It was just so dope, you know, so stuff like that. Or, for instance, uh, also most recently, uh, like I man, so many ideas popped in my head at once. So like all the Gundams, um, like remember like the. uh, the Gundam models, which Gia has a funny story about that. We'll come oh, yeah. to that in a second. But uh, the Gundam models, like they've got versions, you know, you know, ranging from 50 bucks to like $500 of oh, all Oh, yeah, because you, you have like the, the first grade and then you have master grades and then you have metal model kits, plastic, resin cast. Like there's all kinds of different ones. And they've got like DVD sets from like all the old like uh, animes and, and even like, you know, manga, uh, you know, printouts and everything from like the 80s, some of them even the 70s that like, yeah, they're kind of pricey depending on what you're looking at. But as like a collector, there's going to be things that pop in your head that you didn't even remember existed. Like it's going to light a fire in you. where you are like, oh my God, I need this. I need that. Or like Power Rangers merchandise. They come have like the original Megazord uh, uh, action figures that combine together. Like there's just tons of stuff. Something for everybody. Gia, why don't you fill people in on that like slightly hilarious story real okay. quick? Okay. So this is not downing anyone who uses this phrase. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's weird to me. And um, that I'll I'll just caveat or start that with that, that disclaimer. So I used to be very into collecting and building Gundam model kits. Uh, I still have quite a few of them like in boxes that I didn't start because I would like buy two of each i would build one and then leave one in the box so i could sell it later if i wanted to or just to like have it and to make a long story short any time that i would buy these kits when i went to japan when i was in korea back here in the states it was always gundam model kits you go anywhere and say hey i want a gundam model kit everybody knows what you're talking about everybody calls it that you move on with your life you buy the kit in the last two years i've become friends with people um to Like one of them specifically is my best friend here, Hannah, and she used the phrase gunpla. And when she used it, I was like, what the heck is that? Like, what the heck's a gunpla? And she was like, oh, you know, Gundam model kits. And I just looked at her. I was like, that's weird. And she's like, what do you mean? I was just like, I've never heard it called a gunpla before. Like, is that new? And, you know, obviously in researching it, I found out it's been a phrase for decades, but people just weren't using it like a lot. So I made a status about it because I heard someone else use it. And I was just like, you know, this word, like, I feel like I'm getting old because when I used to collect this stuff and I was really hardcore into it, especially from 2008 to 2011, the first time I was stationed in Korea and no one ever called them gumplas, like not in Japan when I bought them, not in Korea when I bought them. Like, it just wasn't a thing. We all just, like I said before, we all said gun to model kits. So I made a whole status about this. And one of my friends just kind of was like, well, it's not cool for you guys to attack people for liking the word gumpla or using it. You know, it's been around since the 80s. And I was like, look, bro, nobody's attacking anyone. I just said I feel old because I'd never heard anybody use it until like the last two years. So I assumed that in between the time that I stopped collecting in like 2011 to now that it became popular in use. So it's just one of those things. Weird old people things. No, I think that's totally understandable Um, because I've heard it before, but I never use that term. It just doesn't roll off the tongue good, you know. Yeah, and then for me personally, and like the people that tend to use the word gunpla for it, they call all Gundam model kits gunpla, and really that only applies to the plastic model kits. And so what it is is it's Gundam plastic model kit. Gunpla is a shortening of Gundam and plastic, kind of like cosplay is costume play, Uh, and they just did that same thing. And I've heard people use it for the model kits, for the resin kits, for, you know, some of the other kits that have nothing to do with plastic. So it's just one of those things where I'm just like, you know, I could see, okay, yeah, cool, whatever, using it for that. I won't ever use it. And there's nothing wrong with the people that do use it, but people use it for literally everything. All I'm saying is in the 90s Bondi commercials, uh, the early 90s, where they had for Gundam Wing, if they didn't say Gumpla, then I'm not saying Gumpla. 
and yeah, I don't they, didn't, care. they didn't in those commercials that I remember. So I remember too. Yeah, to- Toys R Us was pushing them bad boys for like one year, and then they disappeared. But not for us because we were hooked. Of course. So you know, it is what it is. Now, also, um, Gia mentioned briefly earlier uh, the video game stuff. Not all cons are gonna have those, but when they do. Oh my God. Like those are honestly, that's probably like one of the most fun things because to go in, they'll have like usually four or five or more like, um, areas set up for dance, yeah, dance stations for multiple people to play. Well, specifically dance, dance revolution. Cause I love dance, dance revolution. <laughs> and I'm mad that I don't have it at my house. I'm gonna have to look on Amazon, see if I can find it for a system. I'll buy another system just to get it. But, um, Oh my God. It's so much fun. I mean, they have all the different versions. They've got dance, dance revolution, extreme and one and two, and they've got the other games that weren't uh, DDR, but were like essentially the same thing. There's tons of those. Um, and they've also got a bunch of like, you know, little land areas set up with like different call of duty games or sometimes smash bros, like, you know, and they have little contests that go on throughout the day. So, I mean, if you're into that, uh, you know, make sure you check, um, you know, like the little planner and schedule that they have for them before you attend and try to be there on a day that they, you know, that they're going to have it because it's definitely worth your time. Uh, Yeah, And usually it's, 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 it's a lot less busy than for whatever reason than most of the other con. I I don't know why, but it is. So a lot of times you can get in and out, you know, know, maybe 15, 20 minutes to play whatever game and and then be on your way. So that's a thing. Uh, And then also uh, they have a lot of um, like meet and greets with, some kind of celebrity. So they're going to have voice actors and some people know this stuff. I'm sorry, you know, if I'm talking too much, but I have a lot of friends who have absolutely no idea. They're going to have meet and greets. So you can, you know, for instance, meet like, you know, Walter Emanuel Jones, the black Ranger, you know, or, you know, uh, Stanley rest in peace. You know, somebody like him, you know, would be there. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. And Walter, Walter Jones is a funny dude. So I met him at San Diego comic-con last year and he's real good friends with uh, the charity group that I went with. And one of the first things he said to me was, girl, where'd you get them legs? And I was just like, from working out and carrying rucksacks and doing squats. And he was like, they look good. And I was just like, alrighty then. This this person that's like two times my age just complimented my legs. And so I, like, I made a joke to Ethan uh, Kells, one of the guys that uh, is part of our group and streams with us. And... And I made a comment to him that he like that Walter's a leg dude. And he was like, leg, what do you mean? And I explained it to him and he just laughed. You should have been like, Walter, what happened to your finger? Why is it gone? I've always wondered that. Why? Oh, wait, he doesn't have a finger? Yeah. Did you not know that? No, even with shaking his hand and everything, I never noticed yeah, it. Yeah, so that's been an ongoing thing for years. I forget what exactly happened. There's rumors. I don't know the, what the actual story is, but... Um, for honestly, the last 20 years, he's, he's missing one of the, one of his fingers. I forget which hand, but even in the picture that Ethan showed, if you look at him, he's holding up his power ranger morpher with Ethan and he's only got four fingers on one hand, like a thumb, obviously. So a thumb and three fingers. I'm going to go look at that right now. No, I didn't notice that. I think I was just like laughing too hard at him hitting on me. No, uh, the, the rumor is, um, not to cut you off, but the rumor is he, you know, obviously he's probably a little self-conscious about it, you know, but, uh. He's he hides it very, very well. And I never noticed until somebody took their time to point it out to me. And I was like, oh, OK, not judging him. I'm just saying that's that's a thing. You know? Oh, yeah. It looks like he's missing a pinky, actually. Yeah, well, he's it's not just that picture. If you go through like images all over the Internet, you'll see like, oh, OK, so he for real. Oh, no, missing. maybe a thumb. OK, I'm going to go look at his actual page. Yeah, I didn't recognize that. Like when he was OK, so le- left hand has everything. So it's his right hand. OK, hold on. No, no, no. Yeah. It's his it's his left hand, it's his middle finger. That's what's missing. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know if it's like the whole finger or what. Like again, he hides it really, really well. No, I met the, him. It's the whole and... finger. There's a picture of him and he's got his hand out. Meanwhile, the fans, hey, when you guys go to his page, it's the the picture where he's like posing with two older gentlemen. Uh the the dude that plays Darth Maul. This is the picture I'm talking about. But I'll share it into the group chat so you can see it too. But yeah, that's interesting. I yeah, guess because when he shook my hand, obviously you shake hands with your right hand. Like nobody ever shakes with the left hand. So <laughs> not anybody you want to be friends with. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, just, just an interesting fact, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you know, that's a thing, but you know, like I, I've met him, I've met, uh, I met David, uh, David Yost, the blue Ranger, and he's super, super nice. Like he's just one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. Original blue Ranger, I should say. Yeah. I haven't been able to meet, um, uh, Jason David Frank yet. Uh, gee, have you met him? I did meet him. 
he's very, very sweet, and he makes time for people that come to see him and that have paid to, like, do meet and greets with him. Obviously the paid ones, but whenever he's at his booth, people just randomly walk up. He makes time for people. And that's another thing, guys. Uh, we didn't mention that, but if you are going to or intend to, you know, meet one of your favorite comic book writers or a voice actor or, you know, uh, sometimes some of the actors from, like, the Marvel movies and stuff like that, uh, you know, come out and meet fans – Unfortunately, it does cost, and it really kind of depends. And it, it, de- it depends. It does depend because sometimes you can catch them at their own booths, and they will they will talk to you. Most of them, when they have their own booths, they sell autographs. They sell, like, voice lines. They will have you pay to get a selfie with them. Um, I will say that my favorite comic book writer is Gail Simone, and any time that I go to see her, she makes time for me. But she also does free signings. Like, anytime she's at San Diego Comic-Con, she goes to the Lion Forge booth, and she'll sit there for, like, an hour and a half, and she'll just sign stuff for fans free of charge, and she'll sit there and she'll talk to you. Uh, and some some artists and, uh, like, actors will do that. But for the most part, you're paying for, like, autographs. And sometimes it's really cheap. It's like $15, $20. Sometimes it's more expensive if they're more popular people. And that's just basically because that's how they make their money um, being at the convention is having people pay for autographs and whatnot. Like they don't really get paid by the venue for things. Exactly. So don't think they're, you know, ripping you off necessarily. That's just how they got to get by. If you don't want it, don't get it. Me, I personally don't usually pay. I usually hang out by the bathroom and wait for somebody that has to go. And then uh, right before they go in, I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. Handshake, no picture and call it a day. But that's because I'm a cheap person. Yeah. (laughs) You know, that's actually how I met, I think, all the celebrities at the con so far. But next year, next year, I'll pay for something. You'll see. I'll stop being that way. Why am I like this? Because you exist. And me and you are basically the same, so we're both like this. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, there's always another way, right, Gia? Yeah. Yeah, we got to meet – last cool thing that I'm going to bring up, and Gia may have something else for you, is uh, when we flew out last year to Anime Pasadena to go see um, Gia. Jason Page? Yeah, we got to meet um, him, and he's the the guy that did the, uh, the, the Pokemon theme song. Oh, yeah. He's always hanging out with us at those conventions. So if you guys ever come out to um, any of the NerdBot media uh, conventions, which is Nerd Expo now, it's not NerdBotCon anymore. And then Anime Pasadena, he will pretty much always be there. He's like besties with uh, the people that run those conventions. Which is dope because he's a super nice guy and he's always got this wacky tie. Oh, yeah. we Oh, yeah. The the floating tie. That's like literally his costume every single time is he just wears that tie. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's like definitely his go-to, and yeah. it's, I mean it's cool, it's fun, you know, and he's he's having a blast, and still does that Pokemon song very good. Yeah, we have Paul Nakauchi at the um, I think I said his last name right, the guy who voices Hanzo, and he was also in Death Note. He was L's like uh, retainer, I guess, the like gun-toting dude that hung out with L. I remember. Yeah, he's he's been at the conventions too, and him and his husband are really sweet, really good people. So there you go. Um, So we're pretty much at time here. uh, So I guess we'll go ahead and wrap things up. But again, you know, we just wanted to have a show where, you know, we got to talk a little bit about our experiences and, you know, just kind of pave things out for what you might uh, expect to see, you know, at one of these places, you know, how much money to bring based on some of the things that we threw out there. Um, Oh, yeah. Always have money for food, too. Um, And try not to buy it in the convention center. You can literally walk probably half a mile away from any of the convention centers and find a fast food restaurant. Stuff inside the convention center is going to be super expensive. Like, get a bottle of water for four bucks. Nah, thank you. I like to carry my water bottles in. <laughs> it's it's kind of like going to a concert, you know, expect to pay like, you know, eight or ten bucks for a drink if, you know, you want to have a drink there, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so whatever concert prices are, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. So before we do close out, I will say that if any of you have any questions, feel free to message our Instagram, our Facebook. You can even message me on my personal Instagram, which is my cosplay one at apola.star. I'm sure Tino wouldn't mind you guys messaging him on his if you have further questions, but reach out for sure. We like to answer questions about things like this and we like interacting with the fans. Yeah, that's true. So if you guys want to message me, that's fine. What am I, uh, Tino underscore plus underscore ultra? Because I think. Tina loves him some All Might. Yeah, All Might's pretty cool. Every time (laughs) I squeeze my cheeks real tight, I think of him. Is that cool? Is that that manly? uh, manly. Sure. I was just going to say you can think of me as being Small Might because I rock that, but okay. I don't know if I want you to think of me every time you clench your cheeks. You also almost got turned into Killua, so. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) 
I am here for a very small <laughs> Dude, amount of time. Okay, okay. Last, last little extra story. So we recorded a video last year, and it was uh, myself, Tino, Steven, with the Trapped in Anime guys. And yeah. at one point, it started raining so hard, but it wasn't the rain that was the issue. It's lightning started striking. And as we're going, we're standing on top of this hill, and lightning's, like, getting closer and closer. And at one point, I literally feel, so my, my headpiece for All Might has metal in it. And I feel just my my forehead start prickling like static electricity on it. And I was like, holy shit, we got to go, guys, because I'm about to die. And like at one point, the lightning struck really close to the hill and it literally like went up my leg and zapped my forehead. And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go, please. I don't want to die. <laughs> she lived, though. She lived. And then that, my ass was just looking at her running in the distance. And I was look, look at those almighty cheeks talking about your butt. <laughs> yeah, he legit did say that. I think I have. No, you recorded that. You got that on Snapchat. Yeah, that's. I got a video of it somewhere. I got. I got to share that out. <laughs> worth it. One hundred percent worth it. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. Um, again, I mean, our, our main hub is BodySnatchersMedia.com. So please make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel. We definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this show. We will have some, uh, as Gia stated on the Instagram recently, we will have more contests coming up very, very soon. We apologize in the delay. We just had a lot of changes going on within the podcast. But we're back on it, so we're going to get that up and running soon. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message the podcast page or via myself directly. Please do. All right, guys. Have a good night. Bye.